So I made a video recently on three stocks I would buy if the stock market crashes again. And you guys enjoyed that video and wanted me to make a part two on three more stocks I would buy if we see a market crash, which could be just around the corner here. There's been some value starting to show its head recently with the market sell off the last few days. And this is providing an opportunity to really look even closer to some quality businesses that I'll be discussing in today's video. But first guys, please show your support, drop a huge like down below, help this video get to at least a thousand likes because this is a subscriber requested video and I love making videos for you guys and all I ask in return is to turn that like button blue. I also want to state that as of today I have around 25% or so of my overall portfolio in cash waiting to be deployed into the market as soon as we see some great deals. And the three stocks we'll be discussing today are pretty high up in my list here of companies that I want to add a ton more shares into when they enter my buy zone, which I will be discussing in this video as well. So make sure to watch it all the way through. This is the best run pharmaceutical company in the entire world and one of the best balance sheets of any business in the world as well. Johnson & Johnson is a staple in any portfolio and I would love to add shares given the opportunity again. Even at current prices in the high 130s or 140s, it's a good value, but I'm in no rush to build out this position and I would really like to see this below 120 again to really get a big position built out in this world class brand. Why do I want to buy Johnson & Johnson? Well, I have exposure to the healthcare industry already, but I believe J&J &J is a stock that you can kind of just buy and just forget about while earning consistent growing dividends year after year. It's almost like a rock in your portfolio that you never have to worry about. It has an excellent balance sheet, like I mentioned, has consistent growth year over year, and is one of the best run businesses in the world. Their growth year from a revenue perspective is expected to grow at almost double digits in 2021, as 2020 is hurt naturally, like most companies are due to external factors. So I'm not really paying too much attention to those numbers, but 2021 looks good. The true value though for J&J isn't in their revenue growth, it's in their consistency and their dividend growth. This company has raised their dividend for 57 straight years and has raised it on average by around 6% which is quite impressive. Like I said, j, &J is a stable company so to see a consistent increase in your dividend as well is a nice little bonus here. At today's market cap of $363 billion, you realize how big this company truly is and may think there's no more room to grow here. But like you saw in 2021, the company is expected to get back on its slow and steady growth path. And I wouldn't be surprised to see J&J over a $500 billion market cap within the next decade. Now looking at their chart, you can see that it's starting to come down a little bit here recently with the broader market, but still has a ways to go to get me interested in placing a buy order. I'd like it ideally in the mid to low 120s or even lower if possible and if we do see those prices that we saw back in March, I will be a big buyer. Will we get there again? Not really entirely sure but I will be keeping a close eye for this buy zone. I don't really expect a whole lot of capital appreciation with this stock and if I can get a cost basis close to or under 120, I think I can realize at minimum a 25 to 50% return over the next three years or so, which would be better than the typical 7% annual return that the S&P usually returns and combine this with the dividend and that's just like a cherry on top. Realistically, I think we can get into the 120s here with J&J with the broader market selling off, but can we get below that? I think it's kind of unlikely, but possible. Nothing is impossible in the stock market, especially with all this volatility. But I can say this, I don't think that I'll be waiting until exactly 120 to buy in. Anything in the 120s seems to be a good enough value for me where I can average down if the stock price goes even lower. Now, I missed the stock in March. I did not buy any shares in March because I was more focused on other businesses I wanted to build out, and I'm quite happy with those positions as well but now that I have those positions a lot of them built out close to the size that I want to I'm able to spend more of my new capital into companies like J&J. &J. I know a lot of you guys know that Johnson Johnson is PPC Ian's number one pick for his dividend portfolio he absolutely loves the business and after looking into this company more I can definitely see why. Guys I don't really usually do this but if you haven't checked out PPC Ian's channel Check it out, leave a comment on one of his videos, letting him know that Positive Investing sent him, because quite honestly, he is a great YouTuber and investor. Starbucks is the most successful coffee chain in the world that has good footprints in not only North America, but also all over the world, including China, 
where it has a ton of future potential in. Starbucks has been innovating with technology and they're actually one of my favorite plays when it comes to consumer fast food space. McDonald's is another good one that you guys know I like. But when we think of coffee, I think Starbucks is usually top of mind in that space, which is a very powerful thing. So why am I interested in buying a Starbucks? I've built my position in Starbucks, but I still want this to be a bigger position because it's a business that is not really going anywhere. It's well run and it's poised to be a very strong dividend growth company for many years as well. On average, they raised their dividends by over 20% year over year, and in the last year it grew by around 10%, which is still very impressive during these tough times. Looking at growth projections for 2021 for revenue, they're poised to grow near 20% next year, which is no small feat for a company of their size, and I would even consider this a high growth stock. It really shows the true potential of this business and this brand and the product that they serve. It's really become a staple with consumers and people just can't get enough of their coffees, frappuccinos, and puppuccinos. At today's market cap around $83 billion, I believe Starbucks is trading at a cheaper value than what the business is actually worth. This should be a hundred plus billion dollar company guys in my opinion. Just based on their earnings, based on their revenue, based on their growth, I think the market is severely overlooking the long term potential here. Of course 2020 is going to be a very tough year for them due to the obvious, but 2021 onwards I think we can expect to see some good growth here again in this business and that's where I believe it will be back in favor and back to being a one. $100 plus stock once confidence resumes from investors. Looking at the chart here for Starbucks, there's a lot of weakness in it currently, but as a long-term investor, this is encouraging. Personally, I would want to buy more Starbucks in the mid to low 60s, and if we get into the 50s or so, that would be open season for me buying more shares. I think it is possible that we come back to the high 50s in the stock considering everything going on with it right now, but I won't be waiting around for that exact price because we may not see that. 60 may be as low as it goes, and then it starts moving higher after that. The strategy I'm gonna be using, like I always do with these type of businesses, is just dollar cost average once I find value. I truly believe in this business long term. They have an excellent company, excellent balance sheet, excellent management team, and excellent future prospects in my opinion, which is why I really want to build Starbucks into one of my largest positions if possible. Now I'll be completely honest, I think even at today's prices around 70, low 70s, it's not a bad value. It's a pretty fair value for this business. And if you're looking at least three to five years out, if not longer, these are gonna be prices that you're gonna be wishing that you bought a ton of stock in because I can see this company, especially with its growth, being a multi-bagger in just a few years. And guys, just like we did in the last video with SpaceX, if you're still watching, comment down below, Mocha, so I know who my true supporters are here. So this one is simple and self-explanatory, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going into this business. But guys, I love Apple, I love their business model, I love their products, and I love their fundamentals. I mean, this is a trillion dollar company after all, so I'm clearly not the only one that feels this way about the company. But why do I want to buy Apple? I like Apple for a couple of reasons, the main one being that it's extremely safe and has an excellent balance sheet. This is a stock that you can literally buy at any time and just continue holding forever and they keep surprising us year after year with new innovations and new products like the AirPods for example, that's a prime example of a new product that's just become like a part of our culture here with consumers and Apple is just really good at doing this time and time again. They're also slowly growing up that dividend, which I think over time will become one of the strongest reasons that investors flock to this stock. But as of right now, it's still small, but is growing. Now I love Apple, but at a $1.5 trillion market cap today, I can't say that I'm looking at a stock that's cheap or even fairly valued. I do believe it's probably overvalued here. But again, it's a business that I believe that even if you buy it at overvalued prices, given a long-term horizon, you're still gonna come out pretty good with your investment. The company is poised to grow next year, but not by a whole lot, but it is in the double digits and is still very respectful for a company of this magnitude. Most companies stagnate once they get so large, but Apple has managed to innovate, bring in services, do more software, and it's just really helped the business push the envelope and I absolutely love it as a shareholder. Looking at the charts here for Apple, it's clear that since the March bottom, this stock has ran and not looked back. I have specified my buy zone here and it's so far away from current prices that it would take quite a bit of fear to get Apple back down here. 
there. But I do think that it's possible, especially if they come out and say that their retail stores have been seeing a lot of weakness. I think investors probably won't be too happy with that and we could see a big sell off. During the March crash, I was able to add some shares in this buy zone, but the stock recovered just too quickly for me to build out a large position. So during the next sell off, if we do see Apple come down around this level, you can bet that this will be a stock that I'll be buying and adding shares of. The way I see Apple is it's kind of a business like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Pepsi, you know, these like safe companies that, you know, the stock price just keeps going higher and higher and higher. But the main reason you buy it is for that safety. I have the same mindset with Apple. I think it provides you that same amount of safety. But as an added bonus, you're getting capital appreciation as well. And you get a company that's one of the leaders in innovation globally as well. So guys, these are three more stocks that I will be watching if the market crashes again, which again, like I said, may be happening sooner than we think. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below on what stocks you're watching and of course your opinion on the three picks I covered here today. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment down below with Mocha. Let me know that you watched the whole video through. But either way, I really appreciate you sticking around. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.